It was the first edition of this dance photography festival called Pas de Deux, and we were really happy to be part of the featured speakers. We brought a few tubes and some light painting tools, and it was enough to spark some magic throughout the weekend. I have been involved in the dance photography world since 2013 when I created my project Lightspin, which included 25 contemporary dancers from Montreal. Since then, I've worked mostly with Kim, and most of what we do is related to dance, either with light painting, our 360 degree ballet time system, or our playful time outdoors. First night of the festival started in a crazy way when our casual demo turned into a massive demonstration with a hundred people surrounding us. That was absolutely energizing and it did set the tone for the rest of the event. We are at Pas de Deux Dance Conference, an event full of dance photographers. We've been teaching during the weekend. It's a super nice crowd. And tonight we're doing a like, outdoor on-location demo. So we're on site on the resort and we'll see what we can create. <laughs> this morning we were doing a studio light painting workshop. And actually it's been a while. I was trying to remember last time we were teaching in a studio setup, like an indoor light painting, because for the past few years we've been teaching the tubes mainly, so we've been outdoors a lot. And I think last time was a few years ago, I can't recall correctly, probably like 2015 maybe? Uh, two years ago in Montreal, I think. Remember with the, the apple? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, true, okay, so I thought it was, so two years ago, okay, not that far, but still. Um, so to make it more efficient, Eric and I, yeah, we work as a team, so he was mainly behind the camera to like explain and uh, make sure that the settings were, were perfect, and I was doing the light painting, he was giving me feedbacks, we were explaining to the participants like the technique and how we create these and, and stuff so it was a lot of fun because <laughs> usually I'm I don't do the light painting that much and yeah I, I don't know what did you think I think it's time to start oh, okay to okay bye <laughs> Eric and Kim are normally used to doing nice slow motions where if you actually speed up the, the flow of, a, of the revolutions for the light, you'll get more like acro or more, you know, different types of circles. Okay, I want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> stop, stop, yeah stop talking. Stop I want to see that. that. <laughs> It's a new yeah, it's a prototype. This isn't the final one. So I, what I did is I just constructed it just to try it out to see if it's actually working. Mm. Have, you know, get a result. Yesterday you asked us like, what is the main question that we always get asked? That's right. 
Yeah. And that's making that's a perfect circle. How do you make a perfect circle? <laughs> that's right. It's uh, basically something that will help anybody who has that problem of being able to rotate the wrist, the wrist as, as good as Eric can. So this is just something I made up for myself and hopefully you guys that are DIYers, you can guys go ahead and make your own. And okay. it's kind of just a simple construction of a, a, a bolt with a nut and washer and a bearing in the middle so you get a rotation and uh, what you do is you just insert the tube in and grab your flashlight so how do you hold the so what I'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and tighten it up yeah to make sure it doesn't fly off yeah okay so once we got everything snug and tight you want to start at the bottom end so as you use your thumb to rotate mm. the tube once it reaches uh, 12 o'clock, you, you don't. All you have to do is push down with your thumb, and then the gravity will take it the rest of the way. I'm not convinced. <laughs> it might not be as perfect as Eric's. It'll be pretty, well, pretty it, close. It went a little bit to like that direction at the end because it like it. Yeah, the, it would be it, the gravity. I would be curious to see uh, like the result. Yeah. Because, well. Especially, I think, with the speed, that can be a challenge, right? To, to have like the same speed for the whole circle. Correct. So, and, but then, yeah, because it, if it's going faster at the end, this part is going to be dimmer. Correct. Mm -hmm. so, that might be interesting, though. It could be interesting, <laughs> it could be something to play with, or it could be something to refine. It can be also like, as you did yesterday, if you play with a smaller tube, right. it can give a lot of uh, movement potential. Correct. So you that's actually, yeah even rotate it quicker if you want it to. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, so this is what I was most most interested about. When you showed us the spinning part, right. I think you, I think you're into something with smaller tubes like you did yesterday. I think you're into something with this specific uh, tool. So uh, I'm glad it sparked interest for you guys and yeah, nice. hopefully anybody else that's uh, watching out there that wants to make their own perfect circle. Thanks for, for sharing the <laughs> DIY. You're very welcome. <laughs> okay, thanks to Thank you. Guys. We have to go. Being part of the first edition of Pas de Deux was a treat for us. It was stimulating and resourcing to be surrounded by such a dynamic and generous community. Teaching in a studio setup was quite inspiring and brought us back to our roots in a sense. We feel like we'll have to push ourselves to create more in that direction within the next few months, as there are so many more to explore with indoor light painting art.